Hey everybody, Alex Stevenson from SeemsGoodMagic.com here. We're doing the first of many full block uh, Dragons of Tarkir drafts. Um, this is a Swiss, this is a pre-release. Okay, so I've only looked at this set for about... I've looked over the entire set about an hour. I've watched no videos on it. I've done no pre-releases of it. So uh, my knowledge of this new set is going to be very limited. I do know uh, Cons of Tarkir and Fate Reforged very well. At this point, um, let's just, I'm going to take the command card because this one is pretty cool. Countering spells and drawing is good. Gaining life is good. Returning creatures, graveyard to the battlefield. I love the command cycle from what I saw. It looked very versatile and cool. Um, what does this card do? Turn something into a dragon, lose abilities. This thing is like, oh yeah, rebound is back, which should be really interesting. So... Uh, my picks here should not reflect what my picks will be in a couple weeks. Keep in mind, you can read a card and it looks good, and it does not necessarily play the same as it looks. So, very important to keep in mind uh, while watching this. And yes, I did start it off with a multicolor card, but um, I definitely wanted to give this command card a try because I think it's really good. Okay, so what have we got? We've got uh, this guy who I like. Can tap dudes down. We've got uh, Sadisi's Faithful lets you bounce stuff, but you have to sacrifice a creature in order to do that. Otherwise, a one mana zero four is good. We've got a Mega Morphing three one flyer. I actually think that card's okay too. Um, so what do I think is actually the best? Because I think that is a legitimate question here. What does this guy do again? That's cool. First Strike Trample. I like the mashup. Um, let's think about this. I think it's got to be one of the blue or white cards to sort of pair with what we've started with. And I'm thinking the Dunecaster or the Flyer. The Flyer's a 4-drop. The Dunecaster's a 1-drop, which I kind of like. I'm going to speculate that I like this Dunecaster, but we'll find out. I've not played with it yet, but I think tapping creatures down... Does restrict it to non-flyers, which could very easily be relevant. But for now, let's just take it over the four-drop flyer. Although the four-drop flyer may be better uh, because it's a four-power flyer if you pay the three to, you know, do it and then pay the Megamorph cost, which I guess I didn't even check out what the Megamorph cost was. I assumed it was like four or five or something. It was four hard cast, three one, though, which isn't bad, but... I, I don't know. We're going to see what I think of this Dunecaster. Uh, okay, Graceblade Artisan is cool if I, you know, get some cards for that. In case an Ice is at least a good sideboard card. Mystic Meditation seems okay. Uh, Artful Maneuver seems like a pretty nice combat trick. I like Rebound a lot. Uh, Keeper of the Lens is certainly interesting. Um... I think I'm going to go with the Artful Maneuver. Ruthless, Ruthless Deathfang or whatever seemed interesting, but for now I kind of want to stick to the colors I've got. Uh, just because it's going to, it would take me too long to read each card individually and figure out which one I like the most. Um, okay, so Avon Tactician, 2-3 Flyer that bolsters. So possibly a 3-4 Flyer. Uh, this guy's pretty efficient. Bant Colors, not necessarily where I want to start, though. Carsey Deceiver is pretty interesting. Or pay a mana cost to turn a manifested orb. Okay, that's, that's pretty cool. I'm okay taking it. It's also an uncommon, which I think is good. Um, other, you know, pretty good green cards in here. and The Tactician might actually just be the pick because it's a flyer that bolsters. Then again, maybe I should have just taken the 4-drop flyer then. I don't know yet. I want to find out what this Dunecaster can do. I feel like this is actually a pretty good ability. All right. I kind of like this Silk Wrap. I guess it's a bit limited in what it can target, but it is a pretty solid removal spell. There's another Dunecaster, but I think I like the Silk Wrap more. Uh, just the 2-drop. Here's another one of those dudes. So it's Megamorph for 4. This guy's actually pretty good. You, pay, you, get, you end up paying 7 mana to attack for four power flying um, on turn four. But I still think that's that's actually pretty good. I I, I actually like that card quite a bit. But I, I still want the Silk Wrap uh, because it hits any morph 
Megamorph Manifest dude, um, which is just really nice because they don't have a mana cost, so it, it deals with a lot of stuff. And I think Silk Wrap is good, so I'm going to take it. Okay, uh, Contradict is not quite Dismiss. It's a little bit worse, but it still might be a good card. Evolving Wilds is in this, which is very good. Might actually just be the pick, uh, since I would... I don't have to be three color, but I usually like to try and be three color. Uh, because that in once we get to the cons of Tarkir pack is where it... Wait a second. Cons is gone, so it's just double dragons with Fate Reforged. Is that how this is always going to be? Should I have known that? Maybe I should have known that, but apparently we're just drafting two dragons and a Fate Reforged. It could be because this is a pre-release draft. Now I'm actually just unsure in general. Um, but I think there's nothing super exciting here, so I'm just going to take the Evolving Wilds and get a nice land fixer. Um, maybe I should have done some reading on this. That, that might have been a good idea. Uh, Updraft Elemental is a 1-4 flyer for 3. That's not bad, actually. Uh, what's this Lose Calm? Gain control target creature, untap it, it gains haste. You know what? I'm, I think I'm actually going to take this Lose Calm. Uh, the reason I want to take this is, uh, now that Exploit is in, I could end up, especially with another Dragons of Tarkir pack, uh, picking up one of those Exploit Bounce dudes, and then you gain control of a dude, pay another mana, sack it post-combat, bounce something else. Could be good. I think it's slightly more exciting than a 1-4 flyer, although a 1-4 flyer, like I said, is, is definitely not bad. All right, Tormenting Voice. There's also Sandstorm Charger. So you end up getting a 4-5. It's it's kind of like a white version of the Glacial Stalker. I guess that's not bad. I think we want the Enduring Victory, though. That's a pretty nice removal spell. We'll take it. All right. So now we've got some... some well, we're starting to near the, the tabling cards that don't seem all that exciting. I think we're just going to take Contradict. See how this card plays. Maybe we don't even end up playing it. Probably a decent chance we do not. Um, Sarkin's try Yeah, Search for Dragons, not exactly that exciting. Neither is Vandalize. I guess we can take the Monument, but it's at worst a Mana Rock that fixes for red. But that's pretty bad. But we'll take it anyway, because it feels like the thing I'm going to want the most. Okay, Graceblade Artisan versus... Keeper of the Lens and Mystic Meditation. Hey, if we end up getting some uh, auras, I'm probably going to want this. And at worst, 3 mana, 2, 3, which is not too bad. All right, let's just cut white. Continue to. We'll let people have these decent black and green cards. We're a little bit more interested in... Since we took the friendly colored command, it really does limit us to a... Uh, a... Uh, I can't think of the the tri a Jeskai deck only. But we could end up just blue-white and not running the red. We do have Evolving Wilds, which is going to make three-color much easier. Vile of Dragonfire going this late is pretty surprising because I think it's a really good... Not like amazing card, but it's certainly a good card. And it's certainly more exciting than Learn from the Past, so we'll take it. All right, Tapestry of the Ages. All right, you know, honestly, what's nice is both of these cards, especially the Tapestry, are... are kind of well positioned for a uh, prowess deck but um I yeah like I said I guess I should have done some more reading on the pre-release or if this I, I can't imagine they're just gonna not let you draft uh cons of Tarkir once we I don't know why I said full draft in the beginning because it's not it's double dragons and fate reforge which is just weird um I mean people want more dragons packs I guess so I hope it's just the pre-release. I, I imagine it is. All right, Skywise Teachings. I feel like this card is pretty good. This card seems really good. That card's interesting, but not amazing. That's a pretty well-costed 5-5. Five five. I'll give it that. And Champion Sandcrafter Mage is pretty interesting. I'm kind of interested in the Skywise Teachings. We're a little bit short on creatures currently, so getting a card that gives me flyers is pretty insane. This thing's going to work better with uh, the Lose Calm, definitely. But I've already got so many cards that work well with the Skywise Teachings, I think I just want to take it. So we'll give this... 
admitted, it's kind of a do nothing unless you have other cards, but it seems like a pretty powerful effect. And we currently already have what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cards that interact with it. That's a that's a nice healthy count. Alright, Beltol Dragon is actually one of the better ones from this cycle, since flying and hexproof is such a nice ability mashup. There is a Gurmag Drowner though. Which, once again, is going to work better with the Lose Calm. But um, I think I'm more interested in this Beltol Dragon. Flying Hexproof, like I said, is a really nice ability mashup. Uh, nothing else too terribly exciting in here. Elusive Spellfist is, is like prowess ability without prowess. I feel like this guy would actually be really good in the deck, too. Um, but the Dragon does seem to... Have, I mean, like I said, this is one of the better ones from that cycle. I think. Um, so I think I'm just going to take it. 6 mana, 3-3 three, three flying hexproof is still pretty good. Okay. So now we have uh, Cartsy Deceiver, which I guess ramps well for us for our Bell Toll Dragon. Maybe I just place him in the morph slot because he is technically a morph. Um, this card's okay. Negate is going to be good, I think. Ojutai Summons seems okay. Not amazing. But you do end up getting 4 power, 4 toughness, total flying, but it takes a couple turns. Might just be the best card anyway. Otherwise, Karsi Deceiver blocks well. Um, Zergo Bell Striker is okay. If I want to go like white, red, splash, blue. It's not good if you're on the splash with red, I don't think. Um... Hmm. I'm going to go with the summons. I'm going to give this a try. See what I think of it. Okay. Strong arm monk. Oh, wow. That does seem pretty good. That's a nice uncommon. Like, gives prowess to all of your guys. In a way. Um, center soul. This card seems really good, too. Double protection. I really like that. It's like counter your... Removal spell, and then on my turn, I attack in. I do like that. Sarkin's Rage also seems good. Even if you don't have dragons, dealing 5 damage to creatures or players at instant speed is very good. I'm kind of interested in this monk, but i got to admit, we've kind of already got a lot of 5 drops. Um, something to keep in mind, I guess. Um, I'm going to take the monk anyway. If any of these things are getting cut, it's probably Contradict. Uh, here's a Monument that's on color with us. I, I might just want that. There's otherwise Evolving Wilds. Yeah, I think we'll take the Ojitai Monument. Why not? More exciting than the Colagon Monument. Uh, Zephyr Scribe. Yeah, this one is probably pretty good, although it's a 3-mana 2-1. There's another one from that cycle. Seems okay. Uh, Sandstorm Charger. Another fairly, you know, not terribly exciting morph dude. Yeah, we'll just take Zephyr Scribe. I like looting, and I definitely like looting when you can untap with non-creature spells for a deck such as ours. All right, Sidisi's Faithful, once again, something that's going to pair well with Lose Calm. And at worst, you get a 0-4. You don't have to exploit either, so... It's not like it's a downside. Yeah, let's take Sadisi's Faithful. I think that's pretty good. Okay, so we're rocking like seven creatures. Eight if you want to count Teachings. Nine if you want to count Ojutai's Summons. Which is not a ton, admittedly. Uh, Vial of Dragonfire number two still seems okay. It's a nice... It's a little bit clunky, I guess, but... Something to do early. Otherwise, I take the Herald of Dromoka, which is 2-2 two, two Vigilance for 2, which is actually pretty good, too. And I guess we're short enough on creatures where I want some some early plays. I mean, Vile of Dragonfire is technically an early play, too, though. And it combos better with our Skywise teachings. But maybe, but nothing. I, 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 I'm going to try it. I think I like the Vile of Dragonfire a little bit more. I don't know how good it is yet. I guess we got to play it to find out, but... It seems okay to me. Um, I actually like this if I was playing something a little bit more aggressive. 
We did get the exploit guy back. And there's a champion of Ereshin. Lifelink is nothing to scoff at. But I think I actually like this Drowner more. Uh, they're both four mana. And I think being able to exploit in a pinch could be nice. Um, Kindled Fury is something to do, I guess. But I think we're just going to take this uh, Herald now. Get a solid little two-drop creature. Um... You know, this doesn't seem bad with the Vial of Dragonfires. I might actually play. Otherwise, we take Resupply, which is okay too, but not terribly exciting. Or you could just take Negate. Negate actually seems like a pretty legitimate spell, um, especially in our deck that's that's running Skywise Teachings and um, Flyers and Strong Arm Monk and stuff like that. Uh, Defender. I don't like that this has Defender. Am I just going hog wild on these Valor Dragonfires? Are they just terrible? I feel like they're not too bad, actually. But I guess we're going to find out. Um, another Contradict. Sure. Still likely not playing it. Okay. And last pick for us. Okay. So I don't know how many of these pre-releases I'm going to do if... Uh, if they're always, I can't imagine they're always going to be double Dragon of Tarkir with Fate Reforged. I guess I got to look that up. But if that's the case, then I guess I'll keep doing them. But that's not, and then we open Ojitai. That's funny. That is really funny. Well, we got to take Ojitai. I mean, look at us. How could we not take Ojitai? Uh, we're already blue white, and we have Ojitai's command, and we have Ojitai's monument. It was meant to be. Uh, otherwise, there's a Sandstep Outcast in here and that's like the only other exciting card maybe so let's take the ojitai so that's our 23rd card which means we're already we're already ready to possibly make some cuts it looks like we may not be doing the red plan necessarily in this deck but unless there's some good reason to otherwise we've got a lot of incentive to just be blue white because we don't have much in the fixing department besides the evolving wilds and we just have some Pretty good all-around cards in here. Let me see what a Wooded Foothills is worth. Keep in mind, these are $15 drafts, which is kind of expensive. Well, they're only worth about two and a half, but um, I'm trying to think what else is pretty good in this pack. There's really not much else. Uh, I mean, there's an Abzan Sky Captain, which is a pretty legitimate card. But I think I'm a little more tempted to just take this Wooded Foothills. I guess Barricade's okay, too. Enhanced Awareness, a little bit of card draw. I'm just going to take the Foothills. I'm going to take some tickets. I'm not passing up anything I care about enough um, to take there. Okay, Honors Reward, Mind Scour Dragon. Do I have any 6 drops currently? Um, and 4-4 four, four Dragon is pretty good, especially if we already have a Monument Ramp, which we are definitely playing. Um... I'm going to take the Mind Scour Dragon. There's a Jeskai Sage too, but I'm going to try the Dragon out and see what I think. All right, Will the Naga is an option here. There is an Abzan Rune Mark, but I'm not going to pick that here, I don't think. And Humble Defector, I guess, in red. I think we're just taking Will the Naga, which is a pretty nice card. doesn't combo great with what we've got currently, but it looks like I'm going to have to actually cut something for this Will the Naga. So... Um, not, maybe one of these Vial of Dragonfires can get cut since everybody was, how good is this Tapestry? I feel like it's pretty good in our deck, but maybe overall it's not that insane of a card. I mean, it's a do nothing right away, and then it's a do nothing until you cast non-creature spells. Like at least with the other do nothing card I'm running in this deck, Skywise Teachings, I'm netting creatures out of it rather than just drawing a card. Not that drawing a card's bad, it's just... I don't know. Possibly not good enough. Like, I would rather get a 2-2 flyer, I think, than draw a card off of my non-creature spells. I think that's really what it boils down to. Am I just going to go for all the colorless removal? Possibly. No, I think we might actually want the Sky Captain here. I like Sky Captain. Just Sky Rune Mark, though. Uh, how many white permanents do I have? One, two, three, four, five six seven total it's not a ton but just guy rune mark is very much arguably the best of the rune marks i would say with quite a bit of confidence actually i think rune marks the best 
of that, but I guess we're still a little bit creature light. So I can take the Sky Captain. It's just another flyer. My, my cats are freaking out. Holy crap, one sec. God, can you guys hear my cats just like freaking out on each other in the background? It's insane. All right, I'm taking Tranquil Cove here very easily. Ooh, Mardu Woe Reaper is really nice to pick up late here. It gives us something early to do as well. A little more exciting Skirmisher and Pressure Point. Although I don't have any problems with Pressure Point. But we're trying to up our creature count a bit. And Woe Reaper is a pretty good one, actually. I like the... I mean, granted, we don't have a ton of Warriors. But one mana, two ones are certainly nothing to scoff at. And late game, maybe I can... It can be sack fodder to my exploit dudes. Um, do we have to I already have to figure out a couple cuts if I really want to make this Woe Reaper work. Um... Which I think I do, but I don't know what to cut yet. So we're just going to take this Sky Reaper until we figure out what our cuts are. All right, Ereshin Cleric is nice. A, ni a really nice card to have uh, for us especially since we have a pretty good late game plan with our, you know, Ojitai, Mind Scour Dragon, Bell Toll Dragon. We've, uh, even the, su the, you know, the Summons, the, uh, the Skywise Teachings. We have like all of these ways to produce a good amount of Flyers. Erish and Cleric is just a very nice way to buy time. Um, maybe we cut the Grace Blade Artisan because we don't even have any auras. And I'd rather have a 2-mana 1-3 that gains life than a 3-mana 2-3, I think. I believe. guess I'm not entirely sure on that. Okay. So Refocus is a card I could technically play, but I just don't think it's going to make the deck. So I think we just cut the best card, which is probably the Hunt the Week. Okay, so nothing I'm terribly excited about here. I could take the Barricade. I guess it's got decent synergies with Enter the Battlefield creatures, which is pretty much just Erish and Cleric, I guess, or Woe Reaper, or our Exploit guys, maybe. Okay, because I guess it has synergies with our Exploit guys. I'll, I'll consider it a sideboard option. Uh, wow, that's a late fixer. I guess that would bring us into Lose Calm territory, but I don't think this deck needs it. We're doing pretty good on the blue-white front. So I could just take a Skirmisher, which flies, but it's pretty unexciting. I think I'm just going to hate the Windscarred Crag, my opponent's mana base, maybe. Uh, Great Horn Crew Shock. I feel like we already kind of have enough late game. Don't really need the Rune Mark. Don't really need any of this, I guess. Um, take the Disdain, possibly. Sideboard it, maybe. Uh, Goblin Boom Keg is actually not a terrible card. It's just not great either. Um, I think I might actually just hate the Mastodon. I'm not sure I need any of that other stuff. All right, we'll take an on-color rune mark that I'm likely not going to play. Okay, so we ended up with just like a blue-white Skies deck, which is fine by me. We have to make a couple cuts. Um... Yeah, so I think the deck's okay. I certainly don't think we ended up with a bad deck. We have 15 creatures if you count Ojitai Summons and Skywise Teachings, which I will. Um, problem with Skywise Teachings being counted as a creature is it requires your non-creature spells in order to really uh, function. So let's do a count here. We've got 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11... Um, I mean, 12 including itself, but 11 other ones is actually a really good count. Um, we're going to go 17 lands despite having a 7 or a seven drop because we're 2 color and we're not super, just not super color intensive or 2 mana heavy either, especially with these vials. I want to try these vials out. These aren't that bad, are they? How is this bad? I don't get it. I mean, it only deals 2 damage, but that kills Morph, Megamorph, and Manifest creatures, so... In colorless form. I don't know. It seems like a good card to me, but maybe I am incorrect. I guess we shall find out, huh? Um, okay, so what is it? I guess you could technically count Monument as a creature, too. So maybe we just cut the worst creatures we've got, which is... I actually don't know. Um, I kind of want to keep all my flyers. Definitely want to keep all my dragons. Especially since Ojitai's got such 
six synergies with the dragons we do have. I don't want to cut any of my early creatures. Could it be I'm cutting a Tactician or a Sky Captain? How good is the Drowner? I guess the Drowner is just a 4-mana 2-4 that lets me possibly net some value. Maybe the Drowner's worse or uh, better than the Faithful because the Faithful just bounces a creature, whereas this like nets me a card and fills my graveyard for Will of the Naga. Yeah, Gurmak Drowner seems like an amazing card for uh, a Sultai deck, definitely. Faithful just seems like a theoretically good tempo play, but I may not have enough creatures to really support Faithful well. Um, but then again, I want my curve to be lower because I have a lot of like late game stuff I'm doing. Okay, I think I'm going to cut the Drowner. I actually like this card. I think I actually like this card more than the Faithful, but the Faithful seems like something that gives me earlier protection, which I like. Because I feel like if we can protect ourselves early, we've got a really nice late game plan, like I said, with the, the dragons and such. Um... So then I just have to make one more cut. And, I, I mean, I suppose it could be one of our Vial of Dragonfires. Do you still like it, though? I mean, this is just a Vigilance Bear. Not that that's bad. It's also a Warrior, I guess, for some random Marty Woe Reaper synergy. But overall, we're pretty low on Warrior cards. Um, hmm. One more cut, you say. Yeah, I definitely want to run 17 lands. I don't want to cut Negate either. I feel like this card's really good. Negate is good. We already have a couple counter spells too, which is nice. I like having outs for any creature or any non-creature spell. It's kind of convenient, actually. And I got to remember, having command in your hand is probably pretty confusing because there's so many modes. You got to remember the there's probably a few opportunities to really get some good use out of it, you know? Um, how many, wait, how many creature cards can we make us two or less do we have? We have five. That's not bad, actually. It's a decent chance we get that mode online. Otherwise, counter draw or counter gain life or draw gain life. Those are pretty good uh, uses of those modes, I think. All right, I got to make one more cut. It's 14 creatures counting teachings and summons. I guess I could cut a Vial of Dragonfire. I could also cut Artful Maneuver. I kind of wanted to try this card out, though. Okay, because I want to try it out, I'm going to cut the Vial of Dragonfire, one of them. All right. So overall, it's very difficult to evaluate this deck because it's got just a bunch of brand spanking new cards that I don't know exactly what they do yet or how good they are. Um, let's bring in our Cove. Let's bring in our Evolving Wilds. I'm okay running Evolving Wilds in a two-color deck, I think. That still still makes our mana better. So uh, I think we got to air towards... Well, we need more double blue, but we don't need double blue till later. Um... Maybe we just do air towards blue anyway. They want to air towards white. So what is this? Ten sources of white, nine sources of blue. That's probably pretty adequate. I mean, I really don't need blue super early. I think I'm going to air towards white. Just because we have slightly more white cards and our white plays are relatively early. Yeah. Okay. Uh, tough to say how much how, how good this deck is out of 10 um i want to say it's like i honestly have no idea it's just too early to to adequately know how good this deck is i don't even know how much the, the format sped up or slowed down i've heard uh that it sped up quite a bit so i guess we'll find out um yeah so pre-release draft double dragons with uh, fate reforged is that how the entire format's going to be? I don't know. I'll check in uh, any downtime I get, and we'll find out. But uh, all right, we'll see you round one.